Hello. Welcome to Dan Explains It All. Today we're here to talk about MTET, the MIDI to Expression Translator from Old Blood Noise. It's uh, really very simple, I swear. It takes MIDI messages and turns them into expression outputs. It's, it's just a translator between worlds. It midifies your old blood pedals. It uh, midifies a number of other pedals too. So I suppose we should dive in, but maybe we can start with uh, some definitions. Let's talk about MIDI first. MIDI is a communication protocol. It started in the early 80s. It's, uh, you can think of it like Morse code, except the dots and dashes become zeros and ones. Um, I think I don't actually know anything about Morse code. But basically, it's a communication system where if two devices are programmed to understand MIDI, they can talk to each other. One can say, hey, change your control. And the other one can say, OK, I'll do that. And I guess we should talk about expression, too. So MTET is not outputting CV. It's not outputting any sort of voltage on the tip of a cable. What it's doing is providing a TRS connection for a certain expression standard. It uh, connects the tip, the ring, and the sleeve of the TRS cable to the three terminals of a digital potentiometer. It's, it's a knob. It's a digital knob. And it's expecting that the pedal on the other end will be ready for that. It'll apply ground to sleeve, uh, voltage to ring, and then divide between those two at the tip. It's the system that we use here at Old Blood, and a lot of other companies use it too. So it'll be compatible with a wide variety of devices that have expression imports. Not all of them, but check your manual or send us an email if you uh, need to confirm that it'll work. So I guess let's get into what it actually does. Let's listen to this dark star. You might be thinking, I've never, I've never heard a dark star just snap to pitches like that. That's the beauty of MTET. We're using this Morningstar MIDI controller to send CC messages to snap to very particular values. We have an octave down, we have an octave up, we have a fifth that's a little out of tune, but we'll talk about that in a second. And then we have unison, or right in the middle on that knob. So how are we achieving this? We're sending CC, or control change, messages. This is the only type of message that MTET is interested in. There's a whole wide world of MIDI messages, but control change, or CC, is what we're focused on here. If you send CC1, you can set the value of expression 1. So you might send it CC10 to say, set expression 1 all the way down, or CC1 127, the maximum number in the world of MIDI CCs, to say, turn the expression all the way up, and anywhere in between. So unison here is uh, 63 or 64, it's halfway. And that's really it. You're just sending CC messages, they're turning into expression outputs, and it allows you to figure out that, for example, 114 sounds pretty much like a fifth. So instead of having to find it on a knob, you just send a CC message. So that's what we call the uh, most significant bit, or most significant byte, or I don't know, it's MSB. Basically, it's the significant number here, CC1 for expression 1. But you can also make little changes. So MIDI, as I said, goes from 0 to 127. But the digital potentiometers in MTET go from 0 to 255. So 0 to 127 actually just gets multiplied by 2, and you're kind of skipping in increments of 2 as you move through. But there's also a least significant bit message, where you can send 0 to just maintain the previous 
numbers that we talked about, or one to just bump up a little bit. So let's say you're at 63, 64 seems a little off. You wanna be at 63 and a half, use an LSB. And the way we've set up LSBs on MTET is 11, 12, 13, and 14 for one, two, three, and four. So just remember, add 10 to whatever your CC is. In this case, we have what sounds like a fifth on the dark star by sound sending CC1114. And we can flip the LSB by sending CC111 or CC110. And you'll hear it go a little flat or a little sharp. very subtle difference, but it's important when you're tuning pitches or ring mods or things that are very uh, particular in their sweep. So that's how you achieve uh, basically sending one expression control. You're, you'll notice we're focused on CC1 and CC11 right now because we're working with the expression one output. But what if we wanted to use the other three? Well, that's where CC2 and CC12, CC3 and CC13, CC4 and CC14 all come in handy. Let's uh, try a different sound, maybe screen violence. I've changed my bank on the Morningstar controller and we've configured this to send messages on, on CC2. I can turn screen violence into a pure mod by essentially turning the screen knob all the way down. Let's turn the mix up for fun. I can make it a little bit of a slap back. Or a full on long trail reverb. And I don't have to worry about where exactly I am on the knob or controlling something with my foot. I can just send a MIDI message and go right to the position I'm looking for. How about another example? Maybe we can tempo sync a float. I'm going to tap in a tempo on the morning star. Save that tempo. And now the morning star is ready to output an LFO controlling the cutoff frequency of float. This is a question we often get about, can I tempo sync a float? And it's not set up for tap tempo or MIDI clock or anything like that, but through MTET, by directly manipulating the cutoff through the expression port, you can create a tap tempo version of float. It's a handy little thing. So I suppose we should talk about MIDI channels. I've been very careful not to call them channel 1, channel 2, channel 3 when talking about the expression ports, even though that's kind of my instinct, because MIDI channel is a very specific thing. Basically, you can think of it like a, like a walkie-talkie, where you and your friend tune into the same channel to make sure that you can hear messages from each other, but not send those messages out to other people on other walkie-talkies, or something like that. Again, the only communication protocol I barely understand is MIDI. So in this case, we have MTET at channel one. This is the default configuration. It's listening for messages on channel one and ignoring messages on channels two through 16. We have the Morningstar configured to send those CC messages on channel one so that they can talk with each other. If we wanted to change the channel, we use CC100. And this is just a, a very particular message that you're not going to use very often, but it's just to configure what MIDI channel you want MTET to be on. So we're on channel 1, and if we send CC105, we'll switch to channel 5. I'll go ahead and send that message now. And you'll notice that suddenly float is stuck. The LFO isn't moving anymore. It's just at the last message it heard. You also may have noticed that on MTET, all four exp expression lights blinked five times in a row. That's how you can tell you've successfully assigned the MIDI channel. You'll get a number of blinks, count them up, 
and that's your MIDI channel. Uh, if we wanted to change back to channel one, I'll hit this channel one button on the morning star, and that's going to send CC101 on channel five, because that's the channel we're currently on, so that's the only channel it's listening on. One LED blink, and now our float is moving again. Also, if you ever forget what channel you're on, simply unplug it from power, plug it back in, wait just a few seconds, and then count the number of LED blinks. So you can tell we're at one again. There's also, there's one last feature that is the MIDI through, and there's really not much to explain here. Essentially, as MIDI messages come into MTEX MIDI in, they also go out through the MIDI through. This way you don't have to use up an uh, entire MIDI out port on your controller. You can daisy chain MTEX with other MIDI devices and make sure that those MIDI messages are going all throughout the system. What's like one more fun thing we can do? What if we turn on the flat light? What if we just maybe, I don't know, turn on an LFO that was just like potentially connected to all four of the pedals? I could probably listen to this for a very long time. You'll notice that all of the lights are blinking, and this is a great time to point out the way that these lights show you what's happening. So you'll see MIDI in lights up because MIDI messages are coming in. MIDI through lights up because MIDI through messages are going out. The power LED is on because we have power, and expression one, two, three, and four are all blinking every time they receive a message. So you can see the motion and also feel and hear the motion of this flat lights shift knob, the dark stars control one knob, screen violence's screen knob, floats cutoff filter are all changing according to four slightly differently timed LFOs. And that's all possible by simply taking MIDI CC messages and turning them into expression outs through the M10. And that's really it. Nine volt DC power, about 50 milliamps. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a simple device, I'm telling you. It seems complicated, but it can open up a world of possibilities for your expression enabled pedals with any sort of MIDI control scenario. It's available now from Old Blood Noise and participating dealers worldwide for $119. That's really the, all there is to say about it. Thanks for joining.